All right, welcome back. I didn't post anything too gruesome. <clears throat> that's not right. Uh, but I do feel like everyone needs to see what modern warfare really looks like. It's not pretty. It was actually a video. I can't find it. It was a huge explosion. It wasn't this. Uh, anyways, so I warned you guys, and hopefully that helped a lot of you guys out from getting wrecked or um, you took advantage of the situation right you got to do what you got to do right save yourself or you know provide uh the world is not like a movie so uh, although <laughs> actually it's way worse it's like a, <laughs> it's pretty weird i'm not gonna lie um the simulation is pretty weird um but at least i'm i'm pretty damn good at predicting it right so you know let's just keep playing along here and let's keep going <laughs> What else are we going to do, right? Um, so, the markets. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Uh, where is it? Right now. So, this is um, Friday morning for U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Last trading day in the week. A little bit of green. Uh, the market's closed up a little bit. Why is that? Because I instantly, some people are, were already talking about taking rate hikes off the table, right? Because of what's going on in Europe. Um, but that doesn't mean, I mean, let's talk about it. Let's go through this together. Cause here's futures, uh, overnight things are red, but it's not too bad. NASDAQ is only down like 113, um, basis points, 152 for Dow Jones. Um, commodities across the board are in green and they have been in green all week. And I've, you know, I said that like, Oh, all the one third of the energy comes out of uh russia so that makes sense there's gonna be shortages prices are only gonna go up right uh real quick the crypto market's bouncing i believe it's a dead cat bounce um surprisingly bitcoin's up at thirty eight thousand. uh i know hex is down there might be a little more downside for it but uh by the way there was a debate with peter schiff you should check it out um i think you have to go to richard's channel or I'll show you guys in a separate video tomorrow, probably. Anyways, right now, the most important thing is what is going on right now in the news, right? And what's going on in Eastern Europe? I Things are kind of escalating. Okay, here's my alerts. What was the most latest thing? Well, they're moving on, Kiev. Kiev, I can't even say. Um, they're a few miles out as of right now. So it's that's escalating. Um, the divide in the U.S. left and right and across Europe, but it's more, you know, obvious in the U.S. It's like they're taking sides, which is listen. There's definitely bots across the social medias doing the divide and conquer. Uh, so Biden, he, he he basically came out and said they're gonna do cyber attack. Europe came out, the EU, and they said. They're doing massive sanctions, 70% as of now, and they're taking Russia off of the SWIFT banking system, right? Which is basically international settlements and banking uh, for the globe is settled mainly on the SWIFT. I'm pretty sure they anticipated that, right? All these sanctions. So what that makes me believe is they ha they have a backup plan, right? This was probably well thought out by uh, Putin and and China, I believe. They have been buying gold <laughs> and metals and resources for since 2008, for sure, and really ramping up ever since. And there's they have their own digital cryptos or whatever. They could do settlements. It's not a big deal. Like between uh, allies of Russia, right? So the sanctions are going to hurt really the EU and the US more than I think it will hurt Russia. I mean, it's going to hurt Russia. Russia's stock market plunged 40%. I don't think they care because their economy doesn't depend on finance as much as, let's say, the West. Uh, they actually have an industrial base and they have resources. At the end of the day, that's real economy. That's real productivity. The West is more just financial shit. And people in cubicles. It's supposed to be a byproduct of the actual underlying 
industrial part of the economy. The, the industrial should always be the largest, but it's backwards, upside down in the U.S. Like, literally everything else. Literally. All right. And so, basically, I mean, Biden came out and said they're going to do cyber attack. I mean, that is an act of, that's escalation for sure. And th that is like, I, I mean, th the minute there's like tanks or soldiers or planes or, or uh, shipping, not shipping, or sea vessels going at it around Eastern Europe or the Black Sea or anywhere really, but, and one of the NATO forces get hit or they attack the Russians, I mean, this shit could get, it could really escalate, right? Right? It could escalate anywhere. World War, right? So, again, the reason I talk like this, I don't really talk like this in real life. <laughs> it's because of the, you know, the censorship. Um, I'm trying to be careful with my words, but it's just sounding ridiculous. Uh, obviously, China, so, let's listen to this. CNBC's Eunice Yoon live in Beijing. Eunice, what did they say? Well, Shep, China's foreign ministry is refusing to describe Russia's attack on Ukraine as an invasion. Instead, uh, the ministry has been accusing the U.S. of increasing tensions with Russia and hyping up the possibility of war in Eastern Europe. At a regular press briefing today, a foreign ministry spokesperson... All right, long story short, I mean, I don't know how much they're buddy-buddy, but um, it's an opportunity, right? It's a vacuum for opportunity. Because Europe and the U.S., they seemed a little um, like they were egging on Russia, to be honest, in the beginning, which gives them the excuse, right, for inflation and shortages in the store, which we're going to continue anyways, as we know, because of everything that's happened the past two years. It really started in 2019 with the repo market, but that gives them the excuse, like, they could just blame Russia, right, the war. Uh, but... At the same time, this accelerates economic collapse for the West. Like, really, like, like I'm worried. I've never been this worried. I don't sound worried, but I'm worried. Like, now that they have the excuse, right, and they have the excuse to take rate hikes off the table and do more QE, and they will. They might even send out checks again, or who knows. Like, it depends what happens here, right? Um, but again, China, right, and Russia, the East, let's just call them the East, this is like the perfect opportunity for them because the West is so weak financially. And in again, Russia has all the resources. China has, and they both, basically the East, both have all the resources and a lot of the industrial output for the entire globe. And they just recently did a lot of deals with, the Saudi, with Saudi Arabia for oil um, settlements. And people have talked about this for like the past decade. Like this, this, this only surprises people who don't pay attention to geo stuff and economic. To me, none of this is surprising, except maybe the speed of which it's happening now. It's the quickening. Uh, everyone's starting to make their moves now. Now, obviously, this um, situation here is opening up a huge window of opportunity. Jeez. Things like or um China. China, right? Here's Taiwan. It's a huge island. And here's mainland, right? All the semiconductors are like made here basically for the US and for a lot, probably Europe as well. Who knows? I don't know. Um they can make their move, right? Why wouldn't they? Who if, who could stop them? Think about it. What what's the US gonna do? We get everything from them. And that's the scary part about it, right? So essentially th these guys and these guys, this is Russia up here. Let me zoom out. Oh, it's up here. <laughs> this is very globy. I know there's a flat earth brainer right now who's going to go in my comment section. Please don't. I'll just delete it. Holy shit, Mongolia is big, right? Anyways, these guys up here and these guys, this is just like really just desert in between them. But um, there's not a lot of people in Mongolia, I don't think. I really don't know. Um, they they could do whatever they want right now, I believe. Now, there's reasons why... I don't want to get too much into it, right? Why they're taking... Um, let me zoom out. 
they're taking U Ukraine right here. Why doesn't it say Ukraine? Is this in a different language? Huh. Anyways, wait, where's the Black Sea? Oh, these are cities. Ukraine's right here. Um, I was thinking, uh, here's Moscow. I have a word said Russia. I thought that was, um, all right, anyways. Oh, fuck, I have to edit. Edit. All right. <clears throat> so here is the Black Sea, right? Huge strategic port for uh, trade and you know, coming in and out from, you know, other regions like down over here, right? Where all the oil is at, right? So it's got to come up through here, through um, the, what is it called? The Strait of Gibraltar, yeah, whatever, Gibraltar. And then shipping goes up through here, down by Greece, into the Black Sea. And that's where they could also ship out and in for trade uh, oil, right? And... Ukraine used to be a part of Russia. Chernobyl's up north, up here somewhere. Um, there's what you might call it, uh, North Stream Two up here, which is another oil pipeline that is supposed to connect Russia and Germany for uh, you know energy. And then there's another pipeline that comes up through Ukraine to like Poland and the rest of the EU as well. It's and then the country's full of rare earth minerals and everything so here's an article let me uh this is a good article you should read population is like 40 million probably not anymore about 10 million probably already left um i don't want to go through the history this all began in 2014 but the country uh demographically and culturally is split in half right uh the people down let's say south west area to the black sea are pro-russian and then the other side is pro EU, and uh, long story short, Russia does not need or want, and they've been vocal about it. They do, they do not need NATO literally at their front steps because it's like an eight-hour drive from um, their capital, Moscow, right? But anyways, um, Ukraine used to be Russia's. Here's Moscow. Used to be um part of russia right after the soviet union collapsed um, a lot of these countries were taken after world war ii or were okay so like romania hungary and all this was uh basically even up to like croatia i mean they were all influenced by russia after world war ii and then you know there were, here's berlin there used to be the berlin wall right remember and it, you know even poland all influenced all under the boot essentially behind the iron curtain he used to go through like here now i'm not saying that's what he wants I, I just think he just wants ukraine and that gives you a nice buffer between europe nato and and russia right and then you know i don't want to get into like the politics of like all the deals that have been going on with ukraine and energy right but a lot of shady shit <laughs> Like, like global uh, ruling class like uh, type deals where they, you know, do things around the world and then peacekeepers go in there and, you know. All right, so he's going to take it. That's for sure. My, the, the only thing you have to think about is going forward is how bad is this going to escalate? And do they want it to escalate? Um, so you could think like the World Economic Forum is like okay with everything going to shit. Uh, yeah. So that, yeah, then they could build back better. But that, there's no way you could control all that. And I I don't think Russia is a part of that. And I, and I don't even think China is going to go along with it either. I think they're just out for themselves. And in the end, all it does is just destroy the West. And w what I mean by West is Europe and the u.s economically because they're so financialized and dependent at the, you know on foreign industrial output and foreign energy and recently like i've said i these guys have been making um deals with or wait no these guys i don't know why i was i was looking at this is dubai uh no, Dubai's over here. Dubai's right here, and here's Saudi, right? They've been making deals with uh, these guys and these guys, right? This is China. All right, so if it did come to a world conflict, it wouldn't be like the end of the, <laughs> the, end of the world, right? 
a lot of people are afraid of nukes, but listen, I've I've got plenty of evidence. Like I don't want to talk about all these keywords because I can't. But you know what? F it. Um, Hiroshima, and Nagasaki. I mean, there's there's thriving cities there, and they were right. Thousands of tests were done in Nevada. I people live there. You can go to Vegas. It's fine. I think it's more of fear, right? Can they put stuff into it and then, you know, it radiates and it sticks around for a while? Sure. I mean, but what I'm trying to say is it's not what people think. It's more like really just really big bombs, but nothing like what pe like the movies portray. And I know no one wants to believe it, but there's literally cities filled with people right where they drop them. And that's fine. I do think power plants do have more of a risk, but I think a lot of it is really a uh, propaganda and even in like chernobyl like people that never moved out and they just lived there since ever since and they're fine i really don't want to go down this uh route and i'm not even 100 percent confident in what i just said i'm really not because there's hydrogen types i i really don't know all right what i'm trying to say this is really the point i'm trying to say the world is really a bigger place than what people think it's huge, absolutely enormous. And this is why I brought up, you know, Google Earth. It's enormous. Look how big it is. Look how far this island is, New Zealand, from Japan, right here. The world's a really big place. Guys. So I just wanted to show you. So it's, it's going to be all right, even if there was like world conflict. I mean, I guess it's not all right if you're enlisted, right? But <laughs> besides that, now, what concerns me the most about what's going on right now is actually the the cyber aspect of it. Listen, I said this earlier, like I was saying this in 2020, that a lot of um in the US, a lot of um like manufacturing buildings were built were like burning down. Now you could go look at this documentary, and this documentary is like 10 years old. It's called uh, uh Zero Days. There there is a way for um to cyber attack and like shut down plants. And then make them burn down as well. Like they overload the breakers or something. I don't know. And this tech, has, this technology has been out since, or, or these software, these the malware, has been out for over a decade. So who knows what they have now, right? So what I'm trying to say is what scares me more than anything is blackouts. That's what scares me more than anything. Because that could hit anywhere at any time around the world now the inflation the emptier shelves at the stores um products not being shipped around supply chain breakdown is, is gonna get worse right especially if they're gonna start doing cyber warfare and you you gotta prepare for that basically i mean you guys should be prepared because i i came out two months prior to covid breaking out in mass for everyone around the world we had a couple, like, we had at least a month to prepare. So you should have gotten everything you needed then. But just in case, tidy up everything. Because that's what I'm really afraid of. It's just, and, and you know, cyber and cyber warfare and, like, blackouts and shit like that, that's actually economic warfare. And that's actually, what it does is, is resources for big cities and densely populated areas, they're, they don't, you know food doesn't get out to the people that's like turning your own people into like a um like a weapon for that country that scares me way more than actual like standing armies and like movies and the way shit used to be you know back during like world war Two. so the world's a big place if things get really really bad just go out in the woods essentially <laughs> i don't know what else to tell you guys now, hopefully it won't be like that. It'll be like a controlled type theater, right, of war. But that, but, you know, in this modern day and age, that's what actually worries me. And I, I know they're going to do it because Mr. Uh, Schwabi was saying that last year. And it's a great way to um, tank the markets. Or if the markets are tanking, it's a great excuse. Everyone just loses all their stock shares. In a blink of an eye, I don't know. And anything's possible, guys. You know, that's what I'm saying. Anyways, you, look at the size of Ukraine. It's pretty big. It's, uh, I think, the fourth largest uh, country in Europe. 
and uh, very strategic, especially for Russia and, you know, and for NATO, right? This is the battleground, and this is very strategic land for world trade, for energy, for um, the pipelines, and now th the situation with um, the U.S. and Europe doing the sanctions, it's going to hurt the global economy and put, like, I said we were already in the recession, like my last video and the video before that. So now we're definitely in it. Like, it, this is it. Like, anyone buying the dip in the markets, extremely risky. Because even if they don't do rate hikes, they got to come out with, like, I don't know, man. Like, another 10, 20 trillion in, like, stimulus to... Let's say they have to do another round of stimulus just as big as the last, just to keep the market where it's at. If they don't, it's going to tank, you know, maybe 40%, 60%. And then to keep it there, to keep it, if we look at the charts, right? Let me, uh, here, let's look at, the NASDAQ's going to tank and it's not going to come back like everything else, I believe. But if we look at, um, where's the indices chart? All right, so here's the indices charts. If we look at the, if things keep escalating, which they likely will, that's how I see it. Um, this is the global Vanguard index. It's fallen at its low only 13%. This thing probably going to revisit the 200 week moving average if things keep escalating, which they will, which means everything else. So how much of a drop is that short of this? About a, uh, let me do it again from the current price, another 15% drop in that wash everyone out, all the leverage and retail investors, everyone. <sighs> what does that mean for uh, all the other indice indices? For Europe and the US. Let's look at the S&P 500. I think it's going to revisit the 200 week moving average now. So before all this popped off. I was talking about a 20% decline. And then they're going to take rate hikes off the table. And then do more stimulus. And I said they needed an excuse. Well this is a pretty damn good excuse. And I believe they're escalating it. So you know. Because they. I mean it is legit a war. I believe. A war. I mean, they pretty much declared war. The, the shittiest part is the sanctions and the cyber stuff. That's declaring war and escalating it, right? So, unfortunately, that's kind of like the beginning of, I don't want to say world war, but, you know. And then China makes its move. I, bad guys, you know. It's really bad. But I, I said this was a very, this was likely to actually happen. So, in the private group, we've been talking about it for, like, years. And I said that's going to happen. I just, I'm actually pretty, now that it's happening, I'm like, holy shit, it's happening and it's happening really fast. It's crazy. Like, it, it's basically taken two, it, it took five hours for Russia to take half of Ukraine and two days to take the rest. That's how fast this is happening. All right, so the S&P could, from the all-time high dump, I guess, around 30%. So from the current price to revisit that 200 week moving average, um, another 20%, right? And then that would give the S&P 500 a total of 30%. Currently, it's only fallen from the current price or the closing price of yesterday's trading day, uh, about 11%. I mean, the markets haven't crashed or even correct. Well, that's a pretty, that's a decent correction. But it's no, like, crash. You know what I'm saying? And I do think things are escalating right now where a larger correction is warranted because of the rippling effects of everything that they're doing with the sanctions and the escalation, essentially. I think if China comes out and makes their move, which I do believe is going to happen, the question is not if but when, um, that's just going to add up. That, I mean, that could really, and that could happen this weekend, guys. So that will instantly give you that correction, that 30% correction on the S&P 500 for it to correct all the way down around 3,300, 400. And then right hikes off the table, more QE infinity, and probably a huge economic stimulus package, wartime package, some shit, right? And then, uh, so since I'm looking at the charts, Gold and silver this entire time has been breaking out with the rest of the commodities, including oil and everything, and 
agriculture, natural gas, all metals, everything exploding higher. I do believe if the market, you know, as this escalation continues and the war for the capital of Ukraine happens right now as I speak, um, and by the time you're watching this video, things might escalate and you never know what happens over the weekend. I don't know what's going to happen, but I just have this feeling that it's going to escalate into the weekend and um, it's going to start causing major problems in the market. Like, I don't know, someone's going to go under. Someone big, right? Um, where's the ARC fund? Here, uh, let's take a look at uh, Kathy Wood's ARC or something like that, right? Here's ARC Innovations. <laughs> That's bad. It's all time high. It fell 64%. I mean, for an entire ETF, and there's a lot of a lot of capital was in this. Was, now it's gone. Um, there's a couple other ones. There's a lot of things that look like this. A lot of A lot of companies look like this in the u.s indices except that somehow the the index is holding a better than the underlying companies which make up the index which is telling me some is some entities buying it but they're just buying the derivative of it so that technically everyone's losing way more money than what it really looks like when you look at the s p 500 and the dow jones industrial the individual stocks are crashing like arc uh so more mar so there's going to be margin calls and what what that means is i gold might pop a little higher it might even hit 2000 or something like tomorrow maybe even to monday tuesday but eventually like as let's say um the market's correct right cuz the nasdaq is barely hanging on here uh, this is a 12 hour chart i mean it's about to break through a major uh, support area and it this looks like it's about to like this is the dip buying opportunity it looks like that but i'm telling you i just have a feeling about later today technically and this weekend i think more escalation and moves are going to be made in order to get like i just i think that's what's going to happen this looks like a perfect buying opportunity look at this wick but you got to pay attention tonight or before the market's open today uh, later uh, for the U.S. and see where the futures are. If it opens red and major sell-off on the open the first hour or two hours, we're breaking major support and it's just an airdrop. The, the, this is the 200-day moving average right here. Look at this. And we're about to get a huge death cross on the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ will take the rest of the market with it and then you're going to get some major, major margin calls and capitulation and everything's going to dump. And I do think it's going to take everything, including gold, right? Including, you know what else I think is going to sell off? Oil, believe it or not. Where is oil? Here's um, light crude oil futures. Had a good run, man. It went all the way to 100 and went to, it hit 100 bucks. That's resistance. They even have a sell signal, although it doesn't count because, well, the body of the candle didn't go above it it did wick up and i i think the this is a weekly chart by the way i ta is sort of lining up with current events right so which is weird but it does happen i i just think things are going to escalate and yes it's positive for oil but at what point or there's a certain point where the market dumps so hard that it takes everything down with it and it's and because everyone is forced to hit the they smash the sell everything button, and that exists. You hit one button, it just liquidates everything, <laughs> and everyone just panics, and everyone's out. And then oil will correct, maybe down to like 80 bucks, and that'll be your buying opportunity for oil. I believe gold's going to correct all the way back down maybe to, well, I don't know. It might correct to only 1820, somewhere around there, or... 1780 i it's we're gonna get a nice correction i still believe i could be wrong though i could be wrong what if it just what if gold silver metals all commodities just keep ripping higher and they never correct that is a possibility i don't think that's going to happen because i think they the market makers and the powers to be i think they want them to correct because if they don't guys by like if they don't i mean 
by June. It's mad fucking max. Like, you're gonna, like, California's gonna have like $10 a gallon ga uh, uh, gallon prices. And um, at that point, it's like everyone just, it doesn't matter what's happening globally. No excuse. It doesn't, like, no excuses will suffice the, the masses. Because at that point, people are, like, starving. People can't pay for anything. Uh, you have to remember, if the higher gas goes, the oil price goes, the more expensive food gets and everything else because everything is shipped through um, semi-trucks. And right now, speak of, the, speak of the devil, there's, like, convoys heading... Uh, towards the capital in the U.S. <laughs> These are idiots. This is a, like the timing of all of this is very suspicious. That's all I got to say. I highly suggest you do not partake in any of that. Very suspicious. It's like everything is like. It's, it's like the perfect storm. For shit hitting the fan. It really is. And we're coming out of winter pretty soon. In about a month. Oh man it's going to be a wild. It could be really, really bad and wild this spring and summer. And fortunately, I it never slow. It's never gonna actually slow down. I mean, you'll get it'll be ebb and flow, but we're in the quickening, fourth turning, whatever you want to call it. So one more. I'm hoping for one more correction. Then I'm gonna load up on more mining stocks uh, and ride that higher, right? Which I'm gonna publish a list of them very soon for the private members. Um, looking for a dip, right, again, because, you know, there's always a dip, guys. And it looks like it's already started on the leveraged ETF for energy stocks and oil. So there's, there's your canary in the coal mine that things might escalate, uh, war-wise, but at the same time, that could cause a massive market correction, which will actually correct everything thereafter. And the story they're going to say in the news is, um... We're going into a hardcore depression recession, which should take inflation down, and that's why the Fed could print and do more QE, and then everyone, and the speculators are going to sell oil and gas, and that'll be a temporary uh, deflationary event, which is, in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's called stagflation, but man, oh man. After the summer, we're definitely going into hyperinflation. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. Especially if uh, global conflict breaks out. All right. A good barometer of that is agriculture. It's been ripping higher. This is a, one of our core positions. It's been doing very great. There'll be a dip by, hopefully. and the, But the dip on agriculture are very small. Now, oh, here's another problem. So they're doing all these sanctions, right? That's funny because Russia puts out like 25% or one third of the exports fertilizer. So like, I heard, this is what I heard. I don't know. To the U.S. I mean, well, and I without that, I mean, we're screwed, right? I don't know why we can't make our own. Oh, well, maybe because everything got shut down. Um, mines, uh, the mining industry in the U.S. I mean, it's, it's doing all right, but... I feel like the regulations and everything, and we're so dependent on, you know, foreign uh, imports. <laughs> this is why I was joking. Uh, we should just uh, go and uh, liberate uh, O Canada. <laughs> they have they have awesome resources. I don't see why not. You know, let's we'll send some go go on a peacekeeping mission there. <laughs> It'd be great if uh, the U.S. just took you know from the Great Lakes. All the way to Alaska. And then it was funny when uh, Orange orange Guy was talking about Greenland. <laughs> Looks very uh, not green, but it's probably something there, right? Anyways, this is a lot of land, you know? A lot of rich minerals and resources up in here. This is where a lot of um, rare earth metals come from. I don't see how we... I don't see why not. <laughs> it wouldn't even have to be... Alright, I'm just gonna digress. Anyways... What else can I talk about? All right, I'm gonna t let's take a look at the current news live. But um, let me finish up with um some of these charts I have here. Uh, so I hey, we've been profiting in the private group massively. Um, I do expect more upside for our positions though. 
there's going to be more upside. I TA wise as well. I mean, if you look at the S and P 500 on this weekly chart, there's more downside. There's just an air gap right here. Actually, there's a huge air gap, and we broke this support area right here. This was support. I bet traders are thinking we're gonna get like you know a dead cat bounce, which would create a giant head and shoulders up here. But um, I don't think so. I think everyone's gonna get caught off guard. And this puppy's going straight down. And uh, that'll be the 100 week moving average. Will be around 4,000 on the S&P 500. Now again, the S&P 500 I don't think is going to get hit as hard as the NASDAQ. That's going to get annihilated. Um, but we could, I think we could, like, so as a barometer, right, I would look at the S&P 500 and another like 8% drop on that, right? Uh, like today, later today. So this video is going to be up before the market's open. Um, and then maybe things get spicier into the weekend. And then I don't know. As of right now, I see more downside for the market. And that would be a nice spot, right? That would give you a nice 20%. So far, the S&P hasn't even dropped 20%. Um, and I said, I started saying months ago, we need a 20% correction. I mean, I should have like a million followers because I'm so right so so often. But, of course, no one likes hearing the truth, so... And I'm probably, you know, throttled a little bit, a lot bit. Currently, it's, uh, it's at 11% from all-time high. Uh, it wicked down 14%. Yeah, I for a 20% correction. And JP... Not JP Morgan. Goldman Sachs was saying the market can handle a 20% correction. They put that article out, like, a while ago. I remember that. And then... Powell capitulates and does ramps up the QE and whatever. And the excuse will be because of global conflict, right? And then will the markets make new all-time highs? I don't know. But it'll definitely rebound and then maybe it just trades sideways. Chops. As the economy really starts deteriorating. This is actually what I expect. And then what will happen? I don't know. I think hyperinflation is really in the cards. You might have a false breakout and then just everyone wrecked. Something like that. And th this will take, you know, take us into 2024 or 5 or whatever. Who knows? I'm just kind of like planning out <laughs> months and years as well, right? You have to. So let's look at uh, current events or what's going on news-wise. So this came out like many hours ago. The forces are 20 miles away, so currently right now, could be popping off. All right, this is current right now, and right now would be, what time would it be? It would be, for um, U.S., it would be 3 a.m. Um, UTC, for U standard time for U.S. Um, what is going on? This is breaking. UK Defense Secretary says Russia has not taken any of its major objectives and is behind it. It's hoped for a timetable. Yeah, but right before that, Defense Secretary estimates that 450 Russian soldiers have been killed so far. Um, military, Ukraine's military is fighting Russian troops on the outskirts of Kyiv. Can't say it. <laughs> Uh, see what's going on. Dude, a lot of this stuff is fake. And it's like propaganda. It's definitely tailored. See the latest that's coming out. And there's so many, you know, people and bots and mouse. Look at all this crap. What is this? This is the latest. Okay, so here's... This is concerning. This is very, um... So an airfield was taken or was hit by... A Russian airfield was hit. It's not good. What is that? So I, I read a report that uh, Russians uh, dressed up as Ukrainian soldiers and like took key like strategic buildings in the capital. This is a horrible source for news, but no one else is like, you can't get it anywhere else like instant, you know what I'm saying? And collective like this. It's, this well, it's not collective, technically random and decentralized, but not really. Uh, well, the reason I say not really, because, you know, probably somewhat censored and uh there's all sorts of questionable things posted you have to be careful you can't believe every video and every and you have to question the motive behind it oh what's this routers how the 
U.S. and United Nations are responding to Ukraine. Well, I thought something. So when this first broke out, this is fake, by the way. When this first broke out, it wasn't, you saw more videos coming out of Ukraine. Now you don't see um, as much. Oh, here's that video I want to show you guys. Huge explosion. It was like some kind of a plant was hit, chemical plant or something. Maybe it was a, 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 a cache holding uh, <laughs> weapons. Look at that. That's massive. These are buildings right here, off in the distance. That's how. Look at how massive that was. I posted that. It's on my Twitter if you want to look at it. That's a crane. One of those huge high-rise cranes to build them. It's massive. Might have been a gas power a plant. Whoa. Take a look at that. Wow. There was another video I saw that was um pretty good, but I didn't I didn't post it. Okay, I mean you have to really uh filter everything that's breaking. That's like latest news. But um so what's this? This is four minutes ago in the largest city, Papiat, now a ghost town. Okay. I you know, take everything with a grain of sand. Um at least the larger news uh agencies, you know, look at their followers, see if they're verified. And I'm not saying that you should trust them either. <laughs> I'm just saying it's more likely real because there's just random people from all around the world just posting fake stuff and swaying public, um, you know, sentiment towards one side or the other. Uh, I'm not taking any side, but I can see why it's such a strategic location because that's what wars are, guys. It's it's all about resources and uh, strategic location, and it. In the long run, it's for economic superior, superiority. Um, so, uh, what I've noticed, there was a lot of reports of this, that the Ukrainians took out a lot of bridges around the city because ground forces, uh, foot troops, right? Foot soldiers are with tanks. They're getting there with vehicles and tanks, but they're surrounding the cities. That's what it looks like. Can't be sure, right? This is just happening in real time. Okay, look at this. This is obviously fake. This is from a movie, probably. Because that's like a World War II tank. <laughs> See, you have to be careful. A lot of people are just posting fake crap. And then they get you to click on links, and they're probably trying to scam you. This is also very emotional, if you know what I mean. Okay, I think this is, this is the Texas um, governor. From day one... You could read that, right? That this admin, they took away, you know, the pipelines from the U.S. So we're now dependent. Um, and they're not letting the U.S. become dependent, which is weird, right? Um, that's why would you not want the U.S. to be energy independent? The orange guy did. And he was saying that on the news. Just want to throw that in there. Okay, so I'm going to end it on this. Uh, Russia's stock market rebounds 22%. Russia says its paratroopers have taken Chernobyl. And uh, Russian military says it has destroyed 118 of Ukraine's military infrastructure sites. Russian military is moving towards the center of Kyiv Eve, from the direction of Obolan. All right. Um, I don't know, guys. It's interesting. Something feels a little off about all of it. I'm looking at it from from the window of the internet. You know, Could this be another uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's not what it seems. I don't know. I really doubt that. There are millions of people are leaving this country, and there's definitely a lot of footage of. And I'm not saying it's fake. I'm saying like, do they all get together, like the world leaders, and like plan this shit out? And then just do it. But then, you know, I don't know. I, it's definitely real, but it's crazy, right? Years 2022, and we're still doing the same shit that we've been doing for forever. I mean, the U.S. has been doing, you know, not a, I think there's only like a very small, like, few years that hasn't been um, policing the world, right? Things never change, guys. Listen, empires never change. Countries. Uh, if, if you want that standard of living, these things are going to happen. It's just, it is what it is. It's, it technically comes down to the survival of the, of the fittest. 
except it's at a much higher level um, than the animal kingdom, right? Because we're self-aware human beings, right? So it's it's no different than one tribe fighting another tribe for land for you know land rights or whatever, and that'll never end. And it'll never change ever. And the cycles of empire will never end and never change, right? The hard times bring strong men who bring the good times, and the good times bring the weak men. And right now, you're seeing that changing, right? These guys have been through some hard times in the past few decades, right? Since the 90s and 80s, these guys, right? These guys as well. Well, these guys. By the way, if you want to know a little bit of history, these guys used to run the mainland. They just, that's where they escaped to. And now they want to take the rest of them out. Because it used to be kind of more like a monarchy type thing for these guys. But then these guys, for the Algos, these guys started shipping a lot of, well, they did a lot of opium trade here. And then they built up, I don't want to go through the history of everything. Uh, that's where Hong Kong comes from. How crazy is that, right? Like, 200 years ago, or more, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure, 1800s, late 1700s or early 1800s, these guys rule the world. They, You can make an argument that they still kind of have a lot of strength. They're still kind of doing that. But they, you know, they would, they would have vessels go on the sea all the way. Well, it would probably come through here, right? Down here, come around India. They would land in India, have bases there, and then Hong Kong. How crazy is that? And Thailand. And that's without, you know, uh, petroleum-based engines, combust combustion engines. And this was back before electricity. And they used to, we, like, how crazy is that? And then what was it? Um, Napoleon went through from France, came through here, and then um, Alexander the Great from Italy, right here. France is up here, right? Napoleon went all the way into Russia and down here. How crazy is that? The Roman Empire used to stretch the north of Africa all the way to, like, Georgia, and all the way up into England. Um, crazy, man. All the way up into Germany as well, right? And Alexander the Great conquered all the way into Mongolia, and then came down into freaking India. This was all done on horseback. How's that even... It's questionable, right? <laughs> How could you travel? How did Alexander Alexander the Great, with an army of, I don't know, it can't be that many, right? Maybe a few thousand, at most tens of thousands, on horseback, travel to Mongolia. Or maybe he only made it to Kazakhstan. <laughs> I don't know. Um... But then ended up in India. Or maybe he only, maybe he traveled, it was more south. It wasn't as north up into Ma Mongolia, but I thought he did. Maybe he only made it down to like, came down through here, through Iran, Afghanistan. Or did he go from the north, from like Kazakhstan? And then he ended up in India. Crazy, man. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's, it's insane. Small mustachio guy. They took mainly just Europe. In northern parts of Africa. The Mongols, right? So, okay, according to World History Encyclopedia, Genghis Khan took all... Look at this. This can't be right. That's insane. From north, Basically from North Korea all the way to Kabul. And then all the way up into the Black Sea in Bulgaria. Below, like, Kiev, right? And below, like, Moscow. That's insane. Let's take a look at Google Earth. So you're telling me that Genghis Khan went from here, took all of this, all this shit, like all of China, right? Northern China. And then he came all the way down with his little horseman, like Northern Europe, right? Which is where, um, not Northern Europe, Northern India. And then up here is, uh, you know, uh, like Nepal in this area is, um, where Mount Everest is like right around here, I think. And he came around here. He went into Afghanistan. And then he came all the way up into Georgia. And then up into, like, Ukraine, right below Moscow. Just a bunch of men on horses. And just conquered all of them. 
that would be a li that would have to take you a lifetime of just travel with an army. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying once you've taken the lands, how do you keep yeah you, you don't like I don't see I, that these stories are kind of like in my opinion more mythical. But even if you conquered all that, like you have to leave men behind to like keep enforcing whatever you want, right? Your your ethos, religion, and collect probably taxes. I highly doubt that. Like, I, I'm I'm having a hard time believing all this because <laughs> the world's freaking enormous, and to travel all of that and then maintain the empire is impossible. It would it would literally crumble behind you as you left. That's what I'm trying to say. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm probably boring a lot of you. I'm just you know. Having fun with I love Google Earth. So I'm I'm not gonna lie. I don't of course I don't trust it all and remember like a few years ago I found um what was it like pyramids down here and it was legit. It was like in two thousand fifteen photo. But you could obviously tell this is like messed with. Like what's that? I just find geography very fascinating. I'm not a I do wanna travel the world and see it all and experience it. Just no? What is this? What is Suva? Oh, it's Fiji. You guys ever drink Fiji water? It's the best. You really feel better after drinking it. It's good for hangovers. Man, is this out there. Really out there. On their own. Imagine how expensive it is and how long you have to wait for goods to come in. I guess it would have to come from Brisbane, Australia. What's this? Little islands out in the middle of nowhere. Where all the billionaires have their little bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> if everything goes bad, right? Here's Hawaii. Midway Atoll. I, I, I believe it's so hard to fathom these distances for us. How big they really are. But, you know, you could take the ruler. Let's do, uh, this is miles. Like a straight shot from Honolulu to, uh, let's do Philippines. Oh, this isn't kilometers. Let's do miles. Holy shit. It's 5,000. About 5,300 miles. That is really far. Yeah. So, you know, just in case uh, World War Three breaks out, you know, people think of these missiles just coming in. <laughs> like from all the way from over here to like the U.S., which really it would probably be a summary. Um, where's Moscow? Here's Moscow. Let's say it comes from like up north. They would have to do it like this. If the Earth is truly round... Right, and then how do you move this like a straight strike from the north? This is how it would probably have to come it's like the quickest way if it if we're truly looking at a sphere, right? That is about 4,500 miles. <laughs> how do I take okay? Before I end this, this is really weird. I was looking at this, just look at this section of the planet, it's just nothing here. Here's Mexico City, there's California, and, and this is like the Pacific, right. Like Pacific South. Look at that. Here's Chile. It's just nothing out here, man. Nothing. Except Hangaroa. Look at this little place. Do you think people live here? Let's take a look. Yeah? What is that? Oh, okay. This is what the island is. Most fascinating thing ever. Look at this. This is where, um, this is, uh, what's it called? All right, guys. I, I, see, I just went down the rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> look, okay, so that island I was talking about that's out in the middle of nowhere, all alone, is Easter Island, island, all alone, out here, in the middle of nowhere. Now, listen, I, even when you can make boats, how can a civilization survive on this little island? There's nothing for like thousands of miles. The odds of you making it anywhere without running out of food and water you can't drink seawater and it, you know good running into a storm that'll uh ground you right the, the closest thing is like whatever this is papiti or whatever um this is insane so this little easter island this is where uh 900 900 of these statues are you know those heads now this is what's really fascinating if you get a perspective of how big it is. Come on, where's the picture? Here it is. Alright, 
Look how big it is in this photo. Now think how heavy that is. I guess this is the only photo I could find of, um, it's right here, right? Of the full thing um, unearthed. So all my life, my childhood life, there was only pictures of these like halfway out of the ground. So what does that tell you right away? That these things, for the ground to bury them this high, and I, you know where ground comes from, like earth? I, I believe the wind, you know, also brings it like dust that just piles up over time. But, um, so it would probably take thousands of years for this thing to be half, um, sunk into the ground, right? Or not sunk, but just buried. It would take a very, very long time. Extremely long time. Look, look how many of these there are. I think there's different sizes as well. I wish there was a picture of a person standing next to it. Give you a good, uh, idea. Oh, here we go. That's in the background. Pretty far into the background. Oh my god, look at this. Look how big they are in the background. I mean, these are the size of homes. Why can't any of you people walk up to it to get a good, see a good size? Oh, look at that. If they walked up to it, I don't think it would be, it would look like this. It would, because there's smaller ones. Why is every picture of people like, all right. <clears throat> I cannot find any pictures of people standing really close to these. Like the line, the line of the statues, like all of them. There's no pictures. I, I can't find any. If you could find one, I don't know, send it to me in the in the chats. Um, That's weird, right? But this one's pretty good. Look how small this guy is. And he's still probably 30 yards out. Maybe 25. Uh, there was a little sign right there. It might say don't go any near. Or don't go closer to it. If he did, how small would he be? <laughs> Just to give you an example. These are... These are solid stone. Solid. Maybe the hat, not. But... Without... Okay, do you... You know how much this would weigh? I don't know if there's a crane in the world today that could lift this. That's how much this would weigh. Solid. Solid stone. It's not even concrete. Concrete weighs less. There's little air pockets in it. This is solid stone. Carved out of... Supposedly carved out of mountains. I'm just saying. It's kind of weird. What is this? Are these different? Are these modern? I don't know. It's crazy, guys. Oh my god, look at this picture. Look how far they are. They're still so far away from these. So if they went over there near these statues, the people would become even smaller. So how big are these? Like, I just find it interesting. Uh, look at this picture. Look how small they are. And they're still, looks like they're far away. I mean, how big is this? How big are these? Like the size of buildings? And why, why isn't anyone standing next to them? I can't find one picture, not even one, of people actually standing next to them. Like the line of the statues, right? But this is mind blowing. If this is how big they are, it's absolutely mind blowing. I mean, look at this picture, right? A guy and a horse, and this thing's only halfway out of the ground, not even. Look how big the head is, size of a building. Right here, here's a good. Look at that. It's like made from aliens. So, we've gone from markets and world war to this. I think that's a good way to end the night. Alright guys, until next time.